Hey, welcome back everyone. So in this one, I wanted to do a video where I talk about the different pencils that I use. And you know, out of these really, I, I stick to these two. I recently got this one because, uh, I don't know, I heard somebody recommend them. Uh, I haven't really used it. So you guys will get to see me demonstrate that. But I wanna talk about the differences here. We'll try this and see which is the best pencil and will give you the most amazing art. No, it's not that, folks. You can use anything. You can use crowns. It's uh, it's the power is always within you as the artist. But hey, it's it's fun to have nice art supplies and have good tools that do the job as well. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, and these are the two that I gravitated to over the years. Now, keep in mind this is just a 0.5 uh, mechanical pencil. Uh, the reasons why I like this, it's quick. You know, with a couple clicks, you're ready to roll. And it's got a nice little uh, smaller eraser to the back, which I find to be helpful. I uh, typically the smallest one that I have is this clickable, you know, these Pentel types or whatever one, one this is. But uh, I've got a ton of these. But you, you know, you see the difference. This one's smaller, so it gives you more like finesse, a little more, a little more detail. You can kind of get in those little nicks and crannies. So, so there's, uh, you know, the reasons that I like this, and I'll show it in action, obviously. And, and realistically, this is my favorite, and it's the same thing, so just to keep in mind, I just put this one up here because it was brand new and it's a little prettier for the video, but uh, I typically do go with the Graph Gear 500. Again, it's a .5 mechanical pencil. There's really not any differences. What I like mainly about this versus this, this is weighted at the front. I don't know, I just kind of like that feel and that grip right there. But other than that, they're the same thing. This has a grip as well. It's just not very heavily weighted. Uh, in fact, it's almost like you could probably balance it. I can't balance, but you know, it's it's weighted differently. You can see here, it's this is solid. Other than that, same thing though. So then we got the 2H here. It's the same lead type right now on these. I'll probably switch it out uh, for, for one of them, probably another pencil. But this is a 2H lead. This is a two millimeter uh, lead holder. And out of the three, this is definitely the heavier one. It's got a, a very strong feeling. And to sharpen it, you're gonna need a rotary sharpener for that. It takes a little bit of getting used to. I'll tell you though, with the 2H, it's a lot easier. So you do this rotary thing, I'm trying not to get pencil shavings on the on the paper. But you get a nice little pattern going, you know, a little, little rotation there. Uh, don't wanna go too fast. But then when you go to do HB lead, it snaps uncontrollably. 2H, it's great, you can just kinda, I mean, you can get moving on that sucker, I very rarely, I've ever snapped 2H lead, uh, but I, I do like HB as well. So I only use 2H lead in this particular one for that reason now. Uh, this added tape is something I picked up from uh, watching David Finch. Uh, I used blue tape just to be a little bit different. No, I just that's all I had, but it's painter's tape. Uh, and it's, you know, just wrap it around a bunch of times. I always thought it was crazy that he did that. I didn't understand the reasoning, but then once you've done it, it's kind of hard to go back. Yeah, it's just, it gives you that extra grip. It's softer on this part of your finger. And if you're like me and you bear down really hard, I'm surprised I don't have like a scar there, but I have an indent usually. You know, I bear down really hard on that part. And so this gives you that nice little cushiony feel. But uh, yeah, these are, these are fantastic. There's no eraser on it. This is actually a sharpener on the back, but it's, you gotta get a rotary sharpener. It's, it's really not that effective. They dull out really quick as well. And then lastly, the new one is that I'm going to be showing today is a Tombow, Tombow Mono. So it's Homograph Mono e Mono or whatever. I don't know what that's the highest quality. So somebody recommended it and they were like pretty much, oh, what do we got here? For high precision drafting. Ooh. And it's, you know, the impression is in like a gold. It just kind of makes you feel fancy. Um, and if that doesn't, the price will. What will these suckers cost for a box? I can't remember, but it was... They weren't cheap. I'll have to look that up for you. If you guys want to know, I'll, I'll put it in the comments below. But I got a whole box of them, so I got to use them. And it's kind of fun to do that, I guess. But there we go. And, and last but not least, just as, you know, so you're comparing apples to apples, is that this paper is Master's Touch. You can find this at Hobby Lobby. It's an 80 pound paper, and the size is 11 inch by 14 inches. But I've compared it to other papers, uh, and I, I like the line quality, and I like the darkness of the letter. So let's jump in and get started. I know it took a while to explain, but I feel like I didn't want to, you know, I don't want to leave stuff out so that when you guys go to do this stuff, you know, you don't try it on your own. You're like, oh, I got nothing like what that guy got. What, what happened? And I missed something, you know, so I'm just trying to make sure I cover everything. 
Uh, I'll start with some basic rendering because that's usually you know one of the things I'll use to warm up. Yeah, so what I like about this is that the, um, well, let me make sure that isn't, just to make sure it's not, I'm not using 2H in one and HB in the other. All right, hopefully you can see that pretty well. So what I like to pay attention to is what kind of line quality I can get. You know, this does have a little bit more tooth to it, so it's not quite as clean to use as uh, something like a Strathmore 200 series Bristol board, but I, I like the darkness of the line. I, I guess that's a big part for me. I really like a darker line, but without having to use that uh, softer lead because it can get super messy. And I feel like these are the same, so these should both be HP lead. Well, no. For sure here in a second. I'm sorry, should should have been 2H lead, both of them. But you know what? That might be HP. In fact, you can see the difference. Um, even though they're both a 0.5 mechanical pencil, you can see that the, the line's getting away from, you know, width-wise. Hopefully you can see that. Then it is here. Uh, let's do the cross hatching. Yeah, that's got to be a softer lead. But what I like is that they both they both look the same um, darkness. So let's come over here with this pencil now. We'll do a similar pattern. Uh, I really should have started on the left. I guess I'll just have to flip the notebook over. I always do that. Like I'm left-handed. It's like, hey, dude, start on the right so you're not smearing through the work. And it's better for the video. But, yeah, force of bad habit. I always start to the left. Okay, so... You know, I would say that the amount of control is pretty much the same. Um, I don't know if you can see a difference. I don't know that I can feel a difference. What I what I typically feel is that as I progress and this starts to dull, I I you know I got to go back and sharpen. I feel the need to have that tight control. Now it depends on what I'm drawing because there's certain parts where it's nice to have a dull pencil. Uh, so you, you kind of use that to your advantage as well. Like as your pencil's dulling, you start to go to the big, you know, bulky shapes. And, and really, I think it's better to start with a dull pencil. Uh, you'll see Jim Lee do this. It, it looks like he pretty much snaps the end of it off and it's really blunt. Uh, or he just never sharpens it. And he keeps that uh, for his loose rough ends. Uh, and I think it really helps with ideas. Like to let it be rough and loose and, and you know... You don't, you don't want to take a real fine tip and get in there and start, you know, refining too early on. So I say comparably, they're all pretty much there. Now remember, these are both mechanical pencils. So I'm going to do one more with this guy right here, the fancy one, which I think the they're all pretty fancy as far as pencils go. But this one has the gold inlay that makes it look fancier. Yeah, so I'm definitely getting a wider brush stroke. Well, pencil stroke, sorry than I was with the other two. And I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to. That's the difference. Uh, I'll show you some other ones where I try to beef up the line weight. I'm, I'm going for very thin lines. Yeah, and even when I do just that, one, one quick stroke, uh, you could tell it's just a little bit thicker. Not a big deal. And they all look pretty much the same. So it is what it is there. Now I'll go back to the mechanical pencil. And let's try, well, let's see, let's try some thick to thin lines. Thick to thin lines like this. So there's another kind of rendering style that I like to use. And we'll do the same thing here. So notice that I'm, you know, I'm hitting these lines a couple times. Right? It's not just, it's not one stroke. 
I'm basically sculpting the lines. Okay, and then hatching this in pretty much a uh, 90 degree angle. And then breaking them off like that. Again, about the same. So I don't really, you know, I guess you can get the job done with any one of these, right? Like that's, I guess that's really the point of, of testing these art supplies is that, you know, what makes the biggest difference? And I don't know that the pencils do well this one see i don't like this this isn't my favorite pencil um yeah i like the other two but this might have some benefits for something else i'll try some hair texture let's see if it i feel like this might work better for that but it's pretty much the same so let's go over here and just try a uh you know, some hair texture practice. So I generally do like some ribbons. Roll those back and forth. All right. So, you know, this type of pencil just has a certain looseness to it. Now, as far as grip, because that's another big thing, how does it feel in your hand? How comfortable is it to use long term? I guess this would probably, over time, be the most comfortable. It's the lightest. Uh, we're used to this. It's the most common type of pencil. There's no heavy eraser on the back or metal. I mean, it's it's light. So there is that. But I, I've never like gotten done drawing for a 10-hour day and went, wow, that pencil was just too heavy. And I, I use these two. So, you know, again, these two type right there. So... So I don't know if that's a big deal, but maybe you got more sensitive hands and that's an issue. So which in which case you might consider that. But um, yeah, there is that. I guess my hand has cramped up before, but I can usually just do some stretches and you know get back to work. So I was trying some of this rendering here. Again, it's a it def it definitely has more of a loose feel to the pencil stroke I feel like this one would be better for realism because you're typically doing a lot more shading anyways but yeah a little bit looser than I like I have to try it on uh, Bristol board to see the difference Okay, and then, you know, and I just keep going back and redarkening and bringing out the shadows and, you know, back and forth. Okay, so, oh yeah, and then a couple, you know, you always want to add like a couple of like loose little strands to make it look more realistic. Okay, so let's try again and then let's do uh, another texture that I like to do for hair is these zigzag folds. By the way, I'm making a new blog post right now on my uh, my website. I make how to draw tutorials that are in written form on my website. So check those out. I've been trying to add as many as I can, but also making them as in-depth as I can. And I'm covering this very thing is what made me think of it, like I'm doing one on hair. So let me know if you want to see that. But So with hair, I do these zigzags. They're kind of like W's and V-like shapes. And a lot of times I will try to... I think I did a video on this. I'll try to go, they're, they're basically waves, but when you shadow them, you'll see more of the zigzag. So let me try to pick that apart with this type of pencil. So I'll shadow there, here. I should have started light and redrew because I have to kind of look for these shapes. But usually the way it happens is once I find them, I can usually see See them again and again. It's almost like a pattern recognition uh, exercise. But yeah, there's like W's and V's in the in the wave patterns and the shapes of shadow and highlights. So we go darker to the bottom, usually. Light usually emanates from the top, right? You also get like these little U-like shapes.
you know, it depends on the hairstyle, obviously, but the one I'm going for. Yeah, I usually have to soft erase at least once. So let me do that. Now, here's the other part of this. Um, I like to use a soft erase. And when you do that, I'm using a Prismacolor kneaded eraser. It's pretty beat up. I need another one. I've got a little box of these things. But if you use an HB lead, that part right there would have been a mess. So that's the beauty of 2H. Now, keep in mind, same thing applies that if you were to take, this is Bristol Board Hard Press Smooth uh, 200 series, right? So the difference is here, the same pencil, the line is even tighter and, and lighter, right? Oh, uh, and that, that means a lot when you when you rework on uh, your board. Like if you want it to be clean, 2H is a big deal because of that. You can, I mean, I could probably take that right down to nothing. Yeah, so I can barely see it if, if see it at all. Uh, but that gets harder and harder with each layering and, and you know, build up that you do. So as much as I like HB lead, uh, I, I avoid it now for that reason. And usually what I do is I come back with HB lead just at the, the very end to darken some lines. And I, I'm talking like, I'm sure I'm not going to make any more changes because if I don't do it, if I do it any other way, it's just a mess. And then it's probably still a mess to like hold all those boards in your portfolio, uh, take them to shows, you, you know, you probably gotta, it might help to put a fix it on them. I don't know, I'd have to look that up, but I've never done it. But I would imagine they still get messy just from putting them in your portfolio. That's how bad it is when you use softer LEDs. So again, just trying to find these shapes. Should have picked something else. Hair takes me forever, but sometimes I got to do it a couple times. But I just find a couple, you know, waves and zigzags, and I'm just trying to add a sense of texture. But I don't want to stiffen it up too much. Like a lot of times, um, you know, it's much easier to do. I'll try another pencil now. Um, this one, I'll go back to this one. It's much easier to do hair that's like this, like almost like an anime style. Right, you just do something like that, and then you shade in big volumes of it, almost repetitively. You know, way easier to do that, but it just looks, you know, it just looks like grass or something. I don't know, it doesn't even look like grass. It just looks like big bulk shapes that don't have a lot of flow and movement to them. So I, I prefer to do this. It takes a little longer. I didn't even capture it right there, unfortunately, but um, I usually do. I just do it a couple times till I get it, and like I said, once you once you figure out a pattern, it's it's easier each time. Um, I generally do draw the hair shape first, so so that's probably where I, I messed up because for some reason that initial hair shape helps as well. But you see, this is a much easier thing to accomplish. So really, want to try to combine these two concepts: get in a hair shape, and then find a texture or pattern and kind of blend those together. All right, so now, uh, let's see, the next one for, what can we do here? We've got a little bit of cross hatching. Let's try the hair shape again. I really I really should have shown, shown you the comparison of, uh, remember that is this pencil here, okay? So the uh, Tombow, Tombow. And so we'll do a similar hair fold ribbon with this pencil. That ribbon kind of going back and forth. Now, also something that I'm probably not mentioning, but I am doing. Oh, I'm off the page here. Forgive me for that. Whoops. Also, that I'm something I'm doing. I'm probably not mentioning. I'm rotating the pencil occasionally. And what that does, it just gives you the sharper side. And I'm sure you know that, but you know, I just like to make sure that I'm verbalizing as much stuff as I'm actually doing. Really sorry that I just drew off the page there. I hope uh, that didn't take people off. It's hard to like juggle this whole process of looking up and drawing and trying to, yeah. 
it's not easy folks but I, I bring I bring you this content because well one I love it too I'm very thankful for all the support and three because it does some good hopefully hopefully these videos actually go out into the world and help people get better at drawing And just to explain what I'm doing here is I'm trying to darken it up where the folds occur. So where the ribbon, or I look at it like a ribbon, where that looks like it's turning onto itself. I darken in those areas. I'm feathering the lines up towards the uh, higher point of the curve. And then, you know, I try to randomize the lines so that it's not a bunch of tiny little thin lines, some thicker, just to kind of imply uh, the volume of the hair. All right, so with that right there, yeah, it's different. Now, I don't know. I, you know, I didn't have the little flips of hair. Plus, I didn't darken the bottom as much as I would like to. So, let me do that. So, all right, something else to consider. Is it because I'm using a tighter line, I have to, you know, go over the same area more than once, more than I would with the other one. So, remember I said this one has a looser line, has a bigger line. Well, then you're going to have to go over the area more with a tighter line. Just like if I had a 0.3 versus a 0.5 it's going to be different right a 0.7 is going to be easier to to do stuff like this and faster but i like tight details so i would yeah i i like this one a lot more and just the difference of drawing that hair to that hair texture in effect uh, but it is going to take me longer right so um so yeah i mean you know when i look at all three of these it's still the same for me, you know? I don't even know if I needed a box of these. I don't know if I use it. I'll use them just because I like drawing with different pencils occasionally, just for the, you know, the vibe, just to change things up. Um, but I can't really, you know, let me see if if one other thing. Uh, not that I do, do a whole lot of this, but let's see. Yeah, see, I would say this is where this is gonna be far superior, but I don't do this type of shading. Very much, if ever. I, but I, maybe I should. Maybe that's. Maybe I should. Yeah. So. You know, you can get a nicer gradient for sure. I, but I don't make gradients like that. But let's see if I could even pull that off with this one. I've never tried, honestly. I still can. It's just feels a bit awkward. But. But again, it's because I'm not used to doing it. I'm. Typically gonna just do this with all lines. But yeah, you, you can still do it. I just, I think the first one, I think this one's definitely better for that. It felt, it felt more natural. So that's what that's gonna be for. And it makes sense. It's more of a technical drawing pencil and I tend to draw more technically. So um, let's see if there's any other cross hatching I can show you because I, you know, I know that that's a, a big part of what you guys like to see. I know what we can do. Let's go ahead and do some rock texture. That should be fun. So with these, I'll try to get like a flat plane. Break it off to the side. Another flat plane, break it off to the side. And you can do the same thing here with uh, craters. So like you can have this going and just you draw the inset cracks and another flat plane like right there and you can have craters. So it's a similar thing. And then if you want these to be like more like, um, I don't know, flat um, mountainous tops or whatever, flat rocky plains, you would just extend these out into big kind of rectangular, not you know straight, but a lot more wider staggered shapes and then you can break them off a little bit like this and bring them down and have another one start and have it extend way out like you just have to play around with the shapes and you can always add a little debris and stuff on top so it looks more natural because this is kind of a it's too even of a shape like i think that's the main thing like when you're doing organic stuff you have to really watch the shapes for being anything too oval square rectangular you know you start off with those ideas but it can't 
can't uh, end up there at all. Just won't look right. So you get like the cracks going on the side. And just remember what like textures and things like this, you generally want to start with a, a bulk of shadow somewhere and then break it up into different ways. Like to me, that's the easiest way to wrap your head around comic drawing in general. Like whenever I get in and I start doing too many like little lines and everything's a little line, uh, it, it just doesn't work. But if I can think of things like it's a sh pocket of shadow that breaks off into a series of lines in some way, then I generally get something that looks better. And then you start doing that to everything. Like it, it really is a repetitive thing that you can do. It's just every texture and everything is a little different. So you just have to figure out the, the pattern. It's, it's a lot of pattern recognition. That's, that's what we are as humans. We're, we're really good at pattern recognition. Uh, I just saw a video the other day and it really made me uh, pretty happy because it was a scientist, doctor, scientist, and he was talking about why artists don't need to worry about AI. And he's like, one of the things AI sucks at is pattern recognition. It's actually not good at that. And he explains it, you know, due to scientists, he, you'll have to find the video, but uh, it, was, it was a really neat one. And he's like, uh, you know, humans, that's, that's one of our core strengths. You know, it's one of our amazing strengths is we're really great at pattern recognition. You know, it's uh, ingrained in us for our survival. And uh, so that's where AI doesn't bridge the gap. Now, I don't know how long it's gonna be before it does, but it was nice to actually hear something from somebody that knew a lot about it um, that was, you know, pushing back in the other direction. So there's some texture. Again, I like this, this particular pencil probably really the most. If I had to say just one, Okay, here, here's the thing though, honestly, because I don't want to I don't want to be dishonest because I can say that and I definitely like the way I textured this, but I always find myself going back to this guy the most. You know, this type, this 0.5 mechanical pencil, 2H lead, and then I'll switch to HB, stuff like that. Um, yeah, so that's it. This this guy's the winner for me. Now it's not necessarily going to be that way for you. And again, I don't use it exclusively. I use this more and more all the time. Uh, something about this one does feel a little more artsy fartsy. I don't know why. Like maybe this feels like too much of a drafting pencil where this one gives you that little bit of an artsy fartsy feel. And it's got some real uh, feeling of dexterity to it. You know, these can be flimsy, especially if you get the plastic ones. And this looks metal, but it's plastic. It's like, it's pretty flimsy and light. Um, this one feels, you know, like you feel strong holding it. it. feels like a sword. You could do battle with this one. And then if I jumped over to this one and started texturing. Um, and then lastly, what I'll bring, what I'll finalize it with is that a lot of times when I get into my detail work, when I'm really getting in there and, and, grabbing the details of a face or um, yeah, the finer points of the illustration, I do find myself going more to this one. So that's that's it. And I don't generally go to something like a point three. I have a couple of them, but I don't, I don't usually feel the need. But if it was a very tight panel, I would probably even go to a point three with a 2H lead. And then I know I could get in there and get those details. You can get them with this, it's just you have to keep going back to that rotary sharpener and, oh, you know what, that's what I must have dropped. Yeah, there it is. And so yeah, you just have to do it. Now keep in mind too, you have to bring this pencil let out just enough. I usually go to about something like that, so I can see it in comparison, like that, all right? Uh, you don't wanna go out too far because then it's more likely to snap off. In fact, that's probably just a little too much, like that. And then start slow, make sure you're getting the movement uh, going and then you can go a little faster and I never count the rotations maybe I should <laughs> yeah we're good and yeah so you can still go in there and get your details with this but you're gonna be sharpening a lot more for those tight little details I don't know it's probably just a preference and a you know, how long have you used this one versus that one kind of thing? You know, force a habit and then what you got comfortable with. 
and maybe even just a little touch of nostalgia because I'll tell you what all my earlier comics when I did the air and assault stuff for time press uh, I didn't I didn't even know about these this came years later again after watching um, you know David Finch and stuff like that like I I didn't know about these um, I didn't use them so yeah the other one is is again a little bit of nostalgia as well because that's the what I created my first ash cans and comics on you know the, the very first stuff that I did but there you go so hopefully I'd like to go back and add these little specs here and there. But anyways, hopefully this gives you some ideas on to, you know, as to what to use. So again, uh, two millimeter lead holder, just like that, so I can see it again. Uh, 0.5 mechanical pencil with a 2H lead and the Tombow uh, fancy schmancy pencil. I didn't really like it. So yeah, I want my money back, Tombow, Tombow, wherever you are. All right, thanks so much for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. More on the way soon. Good luck with your art, and bye for now.